the ones who don't get enough love. It is all about the managers today. We're giving you our picks. Who's the best in the MLB? Who's the worst? Who's our favorite? Who's underrated? And who's overrated? And you are not going to want to miss that discussion. This is all up next on the Bush League Bros. Roll the open. Now, certainly plenty of fanfare between these two brothers. Just complete Bush League. The little brother just trying to annoy big brother. If you look at it on the surface, it's Bush League. Something about that sticks in my craw. What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the Bush League Bros, partner of the House Call Sports. I'm here with Taylor. My name is Matt. And today we are talking all things managers and MLB. But before we get into that, please do us a favor. Just subscribe. Just cl click that little button that says subscribe on it and you're good. You'll be supporting the channel. And if for some reason you want to watch us again, you'll know where to find us and we'll love you forever. Now, let's get into this manager discussion because I think a lot of us overlook this spot in the organization. Now, especially since analytics have become so prevalent, I think most people just assume that the manager does nothing nowadays and it's all numbers. But to me, that could not be further from the truth. So today we are starting out with our favorite manager in the MLB. And I'm going to you, Taylor. Tell me who it is. Who's your favorite manager in MLB right now? This is the easiest, easiest answer I've ever had to give, Matt. It's Boach. It's Bruce Boach. Man. How could it how could it not be? I know he was going to be your favorite, too, probably. Uh, I'm man. swooping in and taking him because uh, he's the man. And Matt, I don't know if you remember, but there was actually Showtime did like this follow doc series on the Giants in 2011 after they won the 2010 World Series. It was called The Franchise, and it gave a ton of insight into how that clubhouse works. And there was this scene after spring training where uh Bochi gets to tell Brandon Belt that he made the big league team out of spring camp. And Belt is just like overcome with emotions. He starts crying. He doesn't know if he's supposed to like leave Bochi's office at that point. Uh, and <laughs> so he's just kind of standing by the door and he's like pacing and like he's just he's crying and he's so emotional. And uh, he clearly doesn't want to like go out in front of the other players in that state. And it's my favorite part of the whole series because Boch is just like, man, you could stay in here and just hang out with me if you want. Just grab a beer mm -hmm. out of the fridge. This is a big moment for you. Like, just hang out. And the tone that Bochi uses in that moment, it simultaneously conveys to Belt, like, hey, dude, it's okay to cry. This is normal. This isn't the first time a guy has cried in my office. But also, like, this is a big moment for you, and you should, like, sit down and enjoy it and and soak it all in. And so Brandon Belt just ends up doing that. He's just sitting on Bochi's couch, kind of just crying, and Bochi's just there for him. And it's moments like that that, to me, I think separate a good manager from a great manager because we can look at all sorts of numbers that that you know don't really mean much for managers. You know, like there are so many statistics for players, and that's why this episode is hard for me because that's the first thing I jump yes. to. And with managers, those numbers are really complicated, and there's a lot there's a lot more variance built into them, and like they kind of don't even matter because every team has a different objective. Like some teams mm -hmm. are more focused on development right now. Like not every team is trying to win every given game, depending on where you're at in the season. So it's yep. tough to judge managers. And especially now because so many of the decisions aren't even up to managers anymore uh, because right. of all the game scripting that goes on from the analytics department. So the positions also changed a bunch, which makes it really hard to evaluate. And, you know, I look at a guy like our guy, Aaron Boone, and I don't always know if the decisions he's making like i don't know if those are coming down from somebody else or if those are based on like in-game observations or something the analytics department uh, outlined for him so to an extent the manager position now is almost like a the node that that connects sort of all these other departments and has to like bring balance to everything and you know there's no better example of that than bochi uh because the rangers i mean when they brought it back they were basically like hey man like these like you're managing like we're not going to tell yeah. you anything like this is your team you're going to manage it of course you know he comes out and does what he does and wins a championship uh because he's a leader and the players respect the hell out of him and he's just had these undeniable results over the, his entire career you know obviously he won rings with the giants 2010 2012 2014 soft retires in 2019 only to come back and win he is one of only three managers to win a world series in both leagues one of only five to win a world series with multiple teams he's the first manager in history to lead three different teams to a World Series. He's the only manager in history to win the title with the team he previously beat in the World Series since the Giants beat the Rangers in 2010. And he's 10th among managers all time in wins with 2093. And now that's first among active managers since Dusty Baker's retired. And Bochy's got a 606 winning percentage in the playoffs. So it's undeniable there as well. His first manager gig with the Padres organization in 1989, he was down in A-ball with the Spokane Indians. That's his, this is his first managerial gig. 
He leads them to the championship. Then in 1991, <laughs> they promote him to high A, <laughs> Desert Mavericks in the California League, wins the California League yeah, title. Then the next year, they bump him up to double A, Wichita Wranglers, leads them to a Texas League title. The dude just wins. And then they bring him up to the Padres, and a few years into his career, he's he, you know, he wins a pennant, and he's in the World Series again with the Padres. So, like, this dude is just a master class in how to win baseball games. And this year, you also got to see a master class in how to manage a pitching staff and a bullpen in this World man. Series. Because, man, that yeah, that game five, he leaves in – Big game, Nate Eovaldi, just long enough. And they work out at every jam just in time. And then he even brings in Chapman in a one-run game, only lets him face three hitters, which is a really smart move because it limits the potential for Chapman to just be walking everybody. And then he brings in Sports, who is probably his most reliable bullpen arm, gets Mm -hmm. him to the ninth, and he's like, hey, he sees Sports as dealing. He's like, finish this off, man. Like, get this done for us. And so he has Spores pitch two and a third. He just knows how to get the respect from his players, and he gets the best performance out of them as a result. To look at what Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager said about him after the World Series. They they asked Marcus Simeon what Bochi meant to the team through the playoff run, and he just said everything. Everything. Yeah. That's what Bochi meant mm-hmm. to them. And then Corey Se- Seager piles on top of that, and he says what he's done for this team and for this group, it's unbelievable. So it's it's hard to know sometimes what players actually think of a manager because, you know, in the course of a season, you're never going to hear a player say anything bad about the manager when they're on their team. But you can also tell when players do have that genuine respect and love for their manager. And it's obvious that everyone on the Rangers did for Bochy after one season. And that's just been the case over his entire career. And that's why he is the obvious choice for my favorite manager. It's a hundred percent obvious. And what makes really great people really great is the ability to get the most out of the people around them. And Bochy, yes. like you said, Bochy does that everywhere. Like, it's ridiculous yeah. how every single place that he goes, they have success. And Taylor, like like I, you saw my reaction at the beginning, thanks for absolutely snaking <laughs> Bochi from me because he's my favorite as well, okay? First well, of all, because... To be fair, I would have taken Tito if we were having this conversation this time okay. last year. But right. he is unfortunately retired. Fortunately for him, because that dude had about every health problem you could have without Man. just being dead. And he just needs <laughs> he just needs some rest. <laughs> so I'm very happy for him because he just needs to just chill out. Just chill out. Sleep. Yeah. Yes. Go and take watch <laughs> sleep. Yeah, watch, watch, watch go fish. Watch you know? baseball like us. Yeah, watch, watch some baseball, baseball like us. Yeah. Yeah. Be a fan. Be a fan. Don't worry about having to manage. Uh, yeah, he was definitely not on the in the in the in the best state of uh, I was going to say state of mind, but state of body uh, yeah. at the at the end of his uh, at the end of his tenure. But yeah, like you said, Tito's a great. Obviously, was great. But I mean, it's Bochi for me. I mean, first of all, because he just managed the Rangers to a World Series win, but almost as notably led the Rangers to an Astros ALCS defeat. So nice job. <laughs> Appreciate you looking out, Bochi. Thank you. Uh, but also, again, we've seen it for years now. And there's certain guys in sports, whether it be players, coaches, or front office, that just find a way to bring the best out of everyone around them. Have a way of giving everyone else confidence in them and making everyone else believe what they are messaging and what they are preaching is to be true. And that's Bruce Bochy to a T. He's a great leader. The guys always believe in him. He always believes in his guys too. And he's so calm in all of these situations it radiates to the entire ball club like his calmness makes everyone else calm in these big moments and it's why his team in these big moments always seem to come through he deserves so much credit for that that's why right now he's the best manager in baseball and i don't even think it's a conversation he is a top five manager of all time he is one of the five greatest managers in mlb history he is that special because his teams haven't been the most talented teams. Obviously, there's still a lot of great players on the teams that he's been on, but none of the teams that I would say he's managed would have been the most talented team at the league in the t- at the, at that given time where he had them, and they still won championships. He's got four World Series with some of you know teams that aren't the most talented in baseball. I think that's remarkable. He's top five all time. But since Taylor snaked him from me, I'm going to go with something else that someone else, excuse me, that has shown a lot of the same traits. And that's Rob Thompson, okay? He was supposed to be an interim manager 
He took over for Joe Girardi in the 2022 season after the talented Phillies started off 22 and 99. And Taylor, like you mentioned, when a great manager comes in, he can just come into the locker room and flip a switch, change the culture, and he really gelled with those guys in that locker room. Again, he gave them belief. From that point on, they went 65 and 46, snuck in as the last NL wild card. Then they went on the road for the whole playoffs. Obviously, they made their way to the World Series, lost in six to Houston. But again, they were the only team to beat the Astros in the playoffs that year in a single game and they beat him twice so that then obviously last year Harper starts out with the Tommy John surgery to start off the year Hoskins tears his ACL and is out Trey Turner was dreadful to start off the year and again they find themselves in the NLCS where granted they didn't come through in game six or game seven at home you can call that a choke it most definitely could be uh, but the fact they were even there is a testament to how he can get the most out of his guys what makes a great manager is if you can perform and get the best out of your team in adverse circumstances it's not always going to be perfect your team's not always going to be whole we saw it last year with the Rangers Adelise Garcia goes out in the World Series we saw Scherzer go out. They, they had tons of adversity in that playoffs. And again, they overcame it time after time after time. And that's what great managers do. That's what Bochy did for the Rangers. And that's what Rob Thompson has done for uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies. So again, he, he has a very talented roster, no doubt about it. But again, I don't even think it's the most talented roster in his own division, but that hasn't stopped him from going 6-1 and one in the NLDS versus the Braves, which is the more talented NL East team in the division. So, and again, to me... He helps get his guys to the point where, especially for the Braves, like they're in the Braves dome. Like that, you can see right. mentally they're on a different <laughs> level. And you could see, obviously, you saw the Braves. The Braves were cooked psychologically. And I think Rob Thompson instilling that confidence in his team is a big reason for that. So I really like Rob Thompson, him coming in, mid, obviously, him midseason, taking over for a World Series champion manager in Joe Girardi, then making the team even better. I think that speaks a lot to how good he really is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why he's in the Canadian uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, after all. Boom. Uh, I don't know if you Boom. knew that or not. But, uh, and yeah, like most prestigious takes, Hall of Fame. Uh, it, yeah, it, in Canada, it is um, for <laughs> baseball. For, for, for if you're a Canadian baseball player, that's that's the pinnacle. That's the one. That's the yeah. one. Yeah, Matt Stairs also in the in the. Uh, Shout out to Matt Stairs. Hall of Fame. I also want to give a shout out to some honorable mentions for my favorite manager as well, Tori Lovello. Love yes, him. he's got to be in there. Uh, he he actually gives off some Tito vibes for me. Um, yeah, and I feel like I gotta add Aaron Boone to this list, which you know is a little biased. I'm a Yankees fan, uh, but I do feel like he generally walks that line pretty well between being honest with the media and trying to give fans insight into what's actually going on while also not revealing too much information. And he just like is one of those guys that sticks up for his guys. He was tied right. for the most ejections in 2023 with seven uh, with David Bell. And some of those ejections obviously are just absolutely legendary. Amazing. Um, and he also did a great job with a cameo that I got for you for your birthday a few years ago. And I really yes. appreciated that from him. So he's also on my he's on my honorable mentions list. That's a good point, Taylor. I was gonna kind of, uh, I was gonna push back a little bit just because you know we haven't seen the postseason results that we wanted. Yeah. Uh, and last year went so bad. I don't blame Boone for last year, but, um, but yeah, that that cameo was sick. He did a great job great. with the cameo. So shout out to Aaron Boone for getting yeah. me a birthday cameo. You're the man, dude. Now let's go to a manager in baseball that has been underrated by most of baseball to this point. So Taylor, who's the most underrated manager in baseball right now? Yeah, I mean, I just mentioned Tori Lovello, and I think had the Diamondbacks not gone to the World Series last year, I think that's what my answer probably would have been. But he's obviously like on everybody's radar now, so I feel like I can't really use him as my answer. So I went with a deeper cut here. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I, I tried to challenge myself a little bit with this one, um, and I ended up picking Davey Martinez of the Nationals. Wow. Uh, and Nationals fans seem to be split on their opinion of him. And it's usually it seems like it's split kind of along the lines of whether you think his positive impact in the clubhouse outweighs things uh, like load management and bullpen management and things that Nationals fans don't seem to be super impressed with. To clarify, this is not me saying Davey is a great manager, because honestly, I don't watch enough Nationals baseball to know if he is or not. But before Davey, the Nationals were just churning through managers. Uh, since 2007, no manager stayed with the Nationals for more than three seasons. They end up hiring Davey to uh, succeed Dusty Baker, and they don't bring back any of Baker's coaching staff so they could let Davey build his own staff. Uh, so to me, it's like, you know, they, they're bringing 
bring this guy in with the intention of having him be their long-term guy to try and give some continuity to some of these young guys as they develop. But obviously the Nationals have been woefully bad uh, since the 2019 World Series, but no, no, that's really Davey's fault. Like, you know, the Patrick Corbin deal and the Steven Strasburg deal ended up being two of the worst contracts ever. Uh, and that's not his fault. They're still paying money to Scherzer deferred. So like that's eaten up a lot of their salary space right now, but they are showing signs that they're approaching the end stages of their rebuild and not, not the end of their rebuild. They're approaching the end stages of their rebuild. They still have a little ways to go, but they're starting to find some of these guys that could become cornerstones for them. Like CJ Abrams, Kiebert Ruiz, uh, two of their top prospects in Dylan Cruz and James Wood are, they're both estimated to be up to the big league team by about 2025. So they're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel in the distance. And with that in mind, they also just extended Davey through the end of the 2025 season with an option for 2026. And if you don't believe in a manager, then this would be the time to cut bait and get somebody else. Why would you want to keep him around while all these corner, while all these guys are coming up for your big league team that are going to be part of your future? Uh, so I think that shows a lot of belief in him as a manager um, and his strength as a manager has always been his interpersonal skills, which extends to the players and the fans. He sticks up for his guys. Like I just talked about Aaron Boone has some legendary ejections. Davey has some great ones as well. There was a great one where he ends up prone behind home plate uh, down <laughs> low, showing the umpire all the terrible low calls he's been giving to the, to the other team and not his. There's also that iconic uh, press conference moment when he's showing the photo of the runner in the baseline because he's had so much drama <laughs> with that rule over the years and he just throws it to the side and he's like, this is ridiculous. We lost the game because of this. He's sticking up for his guys and I love, love managers that do that. He's had some really incredible moments to the fans as well. I'm sure you remember there was that shooting outside of Nationals Park in July of right. 2021 in that Padres game and in the heat of the moment, all these fans are crowding into the dugout in the clubhouse. They're taking cover. As all these people are crowding around like Davey's office, one of the security guards asks Davey if these people are his family. Uh, and Davey replies, yeah, they're my family. They're our fans. That's just such an awesome heat of the moment response that shows you exactly how he feels about the fans and exactly how he feels about everyone that enters that ballpark to watch them play or plays for him. So, uh, but getting back to the baseball side of things, I've seen complaints from Nationals fans that his, you know, his pitching and bullpen decisions aren't the best. But I also can't really think of a fan base that doesn't frequently question their manager's yeah. bullpen moves. Like I think that's that's just kind of common across really any fan you're going to talk to. I did want to get into this. And if you have any grains of salt handy, this would be the time to get them out because I'm about to talk about the Nationals record in one run games, which are obviously numbers that have a ton of variance. But I did find it interesting that despite having one of the worst bullpens in the league last year, the Nationals went six and two in extra innings games and went 28 and 21 in one run games. So if you choose to read into those numbers, you could use that as possible evidence that Davey didn't have a great bullpen overall, but he knew how to use his best arms. Again, take that with a few grains of salt there. Uh, and it's also hard to question bullpen decisions for teams that are in rebuilds because the best managerial move from a player development standpoint might not always be the one that wins you the game on that given day. You know, sometimes you might want to leave a guy in a little bit longer to make him go through some of those struggles to see how he comes out the other side uh, from a development standpoint. And sometimes conversely, it's better to take out a guy early, keep him on a short leash, build up that confidence. So, I mean, ultimately Davey has a ring and the Nationals appear to be giving him the responsibility to develop all these young players who are going to determine the near future success of their franchise. So they seem to believe in him and his ability to maintain a positive clubhouse and he, his support of his players and his support for the fans makes me think that we might not be giving Davey his full due. But uh, I would love to hear from Nationals fans on this, honestly, because like I said, like to, to really evaluate a manager from a, like a fan perspective, I think you just have to watch a ton of their games. And I have not right. watched a ton of Nationals games, but maybe I will soon because, you know, they seem to be becoming a little bit more of an exciting team. Turning it around a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I like the pick, Taylor. I like the pick a lot. Obviously, you know, like we talked about with being able to manage egos, there was a lot of stars on that 2019 Washington Nationals team. And the year before, I think it was the year before Bryce Harper left. So, you know, he was managing Bryce right. Harper as well, you know. So, again, that's one of the biggest stars in baseball, you know, and having to, you know, manage him. Obviously, Juan Soto comes up 
uh, around the same time, and you got to manage right. Juan Soto. And the the run that they went on in 2019 was an amazing run. Obviously, they won that thrilling NL wild card game over the Brewers, where actually two former Yankees were or two current Yankees are going to involved in the most important play. Juan Soto hit the uh, hit the game tying hit to right, and then Grisham botched it and right, and it ended up you know scoring a few runs, and that's how the Nationals took the lead. But then they then they get to the next round. That Dodgers team they played in the next round was dominant that regular season. They beat them in five, then they swept the Cardinals, and then obviously the classic game six and game seven in Houston against the Astros to win the World Series. So the fact that he was able to go on a run like that shows you the caliber of manager that he is. And like you mentioned, his one-run stats, again, you cannot read into them, but great managers are going to probably have really good one-run game stats. I think uh, even though we just talked about how great Bochi was, and I know their one-run game stats <laughs> last year for the <laughs> Rangers did. weren't that great, but uh, when it came down time for the postseason, they were great still. You know, so Davey Martinez was a really good choice. But for me, I'm going with a manager of a team who was also great in one-run games last year. And listen, my guy isn't really underrated, okay? I'm going to be honest. He's not underrated because he won manager of the year last year, but I just wanted an excuse to talk about him, okay? He isn't my favorite, and he isn't overrated, so this was the only spot I could do it, okay? It's Skip (laughs) Schumacher of the Marlins. His first and only year with Miami in 2023, they finished 84 and 78. That was after a 93 loss season in 2022 and their first time finishing with a winning record, obviously above 500 in a full season since 2009. And to show you how consistently poor the Marlins have been, last year was their fifth best winning percentage in franchise history and they won 84 games, okay? That's crazy, okay? And the fact that they also have two World Series title, they they might be the most bizarre organization in sports okay the Miami Marlins are just bizarre with everything they do okay but I think he did less with more than or more with less excuse me than just about anybody in baseball last year nobody thought this team was a playoff team last year and if you did you're lying okay I didn't think they could make the playoffs okay I know a guy on this video with me right now who is sitting across from me uh, digitally that literally every single step of the way last year was saying oh the Marlins are playing over the skis Marlins are going to regress Marlins can't keep this up and sure enough they make an NL wildcard spot. Again, I'm with you, Taylor. By the way, you were given facts. Like, this is just unsustainable, which it probably was. But again, they found a way to sustain it. That's yeah, why I'm giving Schumacher it. a huge portion of the credit because they won a lot of one-run games, which, like we just talked about, is a lot of luck. But again, they went 33-13. and 13. I, I don't think you can get that lucky. I think that's somewhat due to how good Schumacher was in, in close and tight situations. So again, I think you've got to give him a lot of credit. Also, as an aside, we talked about it a little last year, but they built their team very contact-oriented with a lot of players that they acquired, obviously right. led by Luis Arise. But I think Schumacher was big for that as well because that was the exact type of player he was. He didn't strike out a lot. He didn't walk a lot. He made a lot of contact, put the ball in play, hit for a high average so I think he helped those pieces fit more and get more fit in I guess you could say because he had actual playing experience similar to a lot of his players and that relatability as far as being a manager goes helps so much in a clubhouse and I think he definitely did that so he's not really underrated but I wanted to talk about Skip so Skip Schumacher is the guy who I went to yeah I mean you said it I was probably the biggest Marlins doubter uh yeah I mean definitely out of the the two of us I still think that uh you know that what did you say 33 and 13 in one run games yeah I think a lot of that is still luck but you do make a good point that because that record is so drastic that it's hard to argue that you know the manager didn't contribute to that I don't think he's responsible for the you know the 20 more wins than losses you know but is he responsible from anywhere from like four to seven four wins to seven wins yeah and yeah. That, again that's sure. what got them into the playoffs that four to yeah. seven win margin so I think it's it's fair to say that skip Schumacher is already you know, one of the best managers in the league. And, you know, in my opinion, uh, he's not really underrated, but I wanted to talk about him here. So I talked about him, uh, but let's, let's move to the last part of our show, Taylor. Okay. And we saved the best for last, or should I say worst? Actually, I, I wouldn't say worst because these guys aren't the worst managers in the league. They are simply the most overrated. So Taylor, who's the most overrated manager in baseball? Oh, I did not like this segment, Matt. Um, so you I'm going to start like off I, and I love these. I love these. Ah, man, it's just so hard with managers. So I'm going to start off with an honorable mention here because I don't know if I can consider this guy overrated, but he made some, he made specifically one move last year that I thought was just 
a real bonehead decision, and that's John Schneider of the Blue Jays. Um, yeah. And I also don't know if the general opinion of him is that high to begin with, so I don't know if you can call him overrated. The decision to take out Jose Barrios in game two of the wildcard series versus the Twins just didn't get that at all. I mean, uh, and to me, that decision wasn't good, but I could at least see the logic behind it. You know, it's one of those moves where if it works out, you look like a genius. If it doesn't, you look like a moron. Didn't work out for them. I disagree with the decision entirely, but the part that I think really showed the major dysfunction here was the fallout afterwards because the players were all convinced that that was an analytics department decision. And John Schneider also kind of hinted at that in his comments, but then ultimately was like, well, it was it was my decision. And then the Blue Jays GM, Ross Atkins, came out and said, no, this was completely John Schneider. Uh, meanwhile, while this is happening, you've just got a bunch of players that are frustrated and angry. And so he's my honorable mention there. And honestly, I felt like I needed to lead off with him because uh, this segment was the hardest segment for me to prepare <laughs> for in the history of me being at House Call Sports, because I just I don't wow. know if I can definitively say if a manager is overrated or not, because I barely know how to evaluate them in general. True. But for the sake of the exercise, I, I came up with a name. I don't like the name that I came up with, Matt, because I like uh -oh. this guy uh -oh. wearing this manager's hat. Oh, it's Scott no. Service of the Mariners. Oh, and I love Scott. There were some things that didn't really sit well with me at the end of last year. And I think some of those things do fall on him. And I think it's fair to say that Mariners fans and players have expected a lot more out of this team over the past couple seasons and the results just yep. haven't really been there. And, you know, Scott Service certainly isn't responsible for all of that underperformance. And I would even go as far as to say that he's probably not responsible for most of it. But the thing that bothered me about this team and the thing that left a sour taste in my mouth was the dissension in the clubhouse at the end of the year and his kind of right. lack of a strong response to it. And I think that does kind of fall on him, which is why I'm ultimately choosing him for this segment. But the reason why this has been so hard is because he's already said some things so far this preseason that have kind of remedied some of the things that that frustrated me at the end of last year. But going back to the end of last year, uh, you know, obviously the Mariners miss out on that playoff spot. Cal Raleigh, big dumper, pretty much the next oh, day man. comes out and he says, look over there in the Texas locker room. They've added more than anybody else. And look where it got them going out there, getting those big names, people who have done it, people who have been there, people who are leaders, people who mm. have shown time and time again that they can be successful in this league is definitely what would help this clubhouse. Mm. Should Cal have said this to the media? Maybe not. But the important thing here is that his teammates backed him up when they heard that. Notably, J.P. Crawford, who is one of the other leaders in that locker room, said, I'm with Cal on that. I think we need to go out there and really make a move to help this team. So Scott Service responds to that with, sometimes being a leader means understanding where you're at and being able to control your emotions. Sometimes there's a better way to go about it. And while mm. I do agree with that, I also think being a leader means speaking up for yourself and your teammates when things are not right. And that's exactly right. what Cal did. And that's exactly why his boys, like JP, backed him up. To me, that's a pretty clear indication that the players in the Mariners organization thought there was not strong clubhouse leadership from the top yep. down. And at a certain point, if you're a player that feels like you aren't being heard by your organization, it's natural to want to express that to people who are going to understand you, which in this case was the fans. And I think most fans completely agreed with Cal on that subject. And there were also a few small baseball reasons why I decided to put Scott Service on this list. Uh, the Mariners were actually not good at challenges in 2023. Their overturn rate was only 47%, which was in the bottom third of the league. And they have a guy that is that is largely telling them, you know, if they should go for it or not. So that's not totally on Scott service, but that is one of the metrics that management in general is judged by. And also, you know, going back to this butter knife stat, we've been talking about one run in extra <laughs> inning games. They weren't that great. They were six and 14 in extra innings games, uh, 25 and 26 in one run games. And that is while having a top five bullpen in great baseball. bullpen. Yeah. And and I looked up their offensive numbers in high leverage with runners in scoring position, 105 WRC plus 313 BABIP. So the offense was not the problem. The pitching was the problem. So that does reflect a little bit on bullpen management. The fact that they lost Paul Seawald at the deadline is, yeah. a, is, is really important for that metric as well. Uh, but still, you know, that that is kind of the responsibility of the manager. And that's a place they fell short last year. But now, now I'm going to flip everything I just said on its head because a few months ago, Scott Service came out with a quote that I absolutely loved because when asked uh, what message he would send to skeptical Mariners fans, Service said, we're trying to do the best with the cards we've been dealt. 
And I love that because it's a bit of coach speak, you know, it, it, on the surface, it kind of means nothing, but it's an important bit of coach speak because this is him firing that subtle shot at management and ownership mm -hmm. and the front office. This is him acknowledging the frustrations of everyone and saying that he's frustrated too. And I thought that was perfect. Also, there was that huge brawl between the Mariners and the Angels in June. I was actually at that game. I got to watch with my own eyes as Scott Service was in the middle of that scrum and Skip was just scrapping it in there, man. And I absolutely loved it. So I'm, I'm going to end this all on a positive note. I like that Scott Service can keep his calm. I like that he's that leader that knows when to be reserved and to when to deal with things the right way. But I want him to let that dog out a little bit more this year. I don't want him, his guys to question for one second if he has their back or not. And I don't want them to ever question for one second this year, whether they have strong leadership or not, because they do. And I just want Scott service to let that dog out, man. It's it, from a, from a leadership perspective though, it's so hard to kind of show off like, kind of being a softer side and then like implement the harder side after that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like you kind of have as a leader, you kinda, for sure. It, it, you kind of have to come out showing that harder side. And then, you know, in certain instances, dumb it down and be a little bit softer with yes. certain people. So yeah, it's going to be a, 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 de a delicate balance for Scott service as far as that goes, but I'm going to go with a guy. Okay. Who is currently one of the most decorated managers in baseball. And he's won over a hundred games, five times. Uh, would have been six times if 2020 had been a full season. Made the playoffs oh. all eight years he's been a manager. He's won the division seven out of eight years. And the other uh, was narrowly second place, and he won 106 games that year. He's made oh. five NLCS, three World Series, and has won a championship. Now, the question is, why am I choosing Dodgers manager Dave Roberts as the league's most overrated manager? Because all of that to me, all of those accomplishments to me are underachieving. I'm sorry. I need to see more in the postseason. Granted, again, they won in 2020 and in 2017 and in even 2018 when they lost in the World Series. It's clouded with sign stealing question marks. Okay. So there's a few arguments in his favor as far as postseason goes. Okay. But, and then there's the classic, well, it's the playoffs. Anything could happen argument. But I'm sorry to me, consistently with the most talented team in baseball over basically the last decade, you have to do better. You just have to. You have yeah. got to do better. The last three years, especially, have have all been bad. They had a lot more talent to me than the 2021 Braves had. They lost in six in the NLCS. In 2022, they were a 111 win team. They won their division by 22 games. One of the biggest margins from first to second in MLB history. And then they lost to that second place team in the Padres and the 2022 NLDS to not even make the NLCS as an 111 win team is egregious. Then last year in 2023, 100 wins again to get swept by the second place team in your own division again. And the last team to make the playoffs in the Arizona Diamondbacks again in the NLDS is awful. It's not good enough. And for a manager that a lot of people have as a top three manager in baseball, it's unacceptable. If you have top one or two talent, which the Dodgers have had every single year, he's been the manager and then get results as if you're the third through eight to 10th best teams in the league. That's not how it works. Again, he's got an opportunity this year with maybe the most talented team ever, and he needs to come through. Again, it's not a want to, it's a have to. It's a need to come through. And if he doesn't, Barring like unforeseen like amount of injuries where it like ain't even the same team where it's like, you know, Freeman and Mookie and, you know, Otani gets hurt, like all of them get hurt. I think if they have an underwhelming season this year, if they have another NLDS season this year, he's going to be gone. They're not going to accept anything less than World Series rings for him for the next half decade. And if Dave Roberts underachieves like he has been consistently, he's gone. He is out of there. And for all those reasons, I think Dave Roberts is the most overrated manager in baseball, Taylor. There was also that weird incident this year, this offseason, that weird faux pas with Shohei where he wasn't supposed to say they met. And then he kind of just blurted out like, yeah, yeah, weird. we met with Shohei. It's just kind of a weird manager move as well. And that was uh, just a very untactful way to, to navigate the most important free agent signing uh, of Dave yeah. Roberts' career and probably ever. Um, so that was kind of weird, but yeah, it's hard to argue that, man. Like if they don't start winning some championships soon, then they, they fail. No doubt. I mean, it, I could see them, you know, if they, if they, I think, I think another NLDS, uh, exit this year, I think he's gone for sure. But if they make a CS 
or if they make a World Series, they'll bring him back. But if it's you know after 2025, you know, and you haven't with this team, you haven't won a World Series. You've won one World Series, and it was a COVID shortened season. Like you got to make a change. There's too yeah. much damn talent on this team for you to keep not winning World Series. I'm sorry. I know that there's you know the we talked about it uh, a little bit last week. There's that little bit of variance in the playoffs. You never know what's going to happen. You could get the Diamondbacks in the World Series. The Rangers can make a run to the World Series. Anybody can make a run to the World Series. But again, it can't be that variant to where the team with the most yeah. talent in baseball only has one championship over the last decade. That's not how it works. I'm sorry. It's just not, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you, you, we talk about variants, but they've also had so many chances, you know, they've had so many a chances ton. to do it. So the variance isn't really even a factor anymore at this point. It's like, no. you, you just got to do it. And I think you're right. And you know, it's hard for me to imagine Dave Roberts not managing that club, but I do think that there is something to be said for just those guys on that team getting a little bit more of a fresh start with Dave Roberts going into the playoffs with them. Maybe they're carrying a little bit more baggage, but if they have somebody else at the helm, maybe they go into the playoffs feeling like you feeling like a bit of a different team and like those expectations maybe aren't there quite as much. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, it, this is just another instance of it's really hard to evaluate uh, the inner workings of, of those clubhouses. Taylor, if Bruce Boshi was the manager of the Dodgers over the last decade, how many championships do they have? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, boy. More. <laughs> more yeah, would be my answer. Yeah, yeah, more. Definitely more. I would say yeah. I would say anywhere from three to five, honestly. Like, I would say anywhere from three to five. Like, they've been that close. And so I think they definitely win the Astros one. I think, you know, a, a, a couple of those other ones where they lost earlier in the playoffs, they're making deeper playoff runs. They're they're able to overcome that. So I, I think anywhere from three or five. And that says so much about who yeah. your manager currently is. If you replace this manager with the best version of the manager that you can find right now in the MLB, which is Bruce Bochy, and you add an extra, uh, I'll be conservative, an extra two championships, like, Again, that says that says something about the manager that you have, and maybe again you need to look, you know, elsewhere. But again, the players have to perform too. I mean, you look at the the offense yeah. in last year's postseason; they scored two runs a game. You know, like the, again, that's not on Dave Roberts. Like Mookie Betts has to play better, Freddie Freeman has to play better. But again, it's at a certain point, it's not a coincidence. Like this, these aren't just random happenings. It's got to be something coming from somewhere. And in my opinion, it's you know a, a, a lion's share of the blame. Maybe not a lion's share, but a, a, a piece of the pie has definitely got to go to Dave Roberts for sure. But that is going to do it for us today here for the Bush League Bros. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, comment down below who you think is the most overrated manager, the best, the worst. Comment everything managers down below. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well, at Bush League Bros. Shout out to all you guys who have been uh, watching that content on Instagram and TikTok. You've been showing it a ton of love. Thank you guys so much for the love. Also, follow at the House Call Sports on all platforms as well. If you like content from all sports, that is the place to go. And that's going to be it for us. Peace. I just typed in Bruce Bochy. You are never going to guess the first result that came up. Is he at head size? Really? <laughs> hat size. Bruce oh Bochy God. hat size is widely said to be eight and one eighth inches. Oh God, that's so much. He literally has the biggest head in Major League Baseball history. That's insane. It's, all, it's packed with just baseball knowledge and strategy and